Hello and welcome to a Spark AR Studio video. In this we're going to be looking at how to complete a variety of tasks and in this video we're going to be looking at the use of face meshes and textures. So first thing I'm going to want to do is I'm just going to want to create a new folder on my desktop and I'm just going to name this I'm going to rename this with my name so I can easily identify it later. Once my computer behaves, thank you. Like so. And in this folder is where we're going to be storing all of our assets and our project as we work through these tasks. So I'm just going to, with Spark AR Studio open, I've already signed into my Facebook account. I'm going to create a new project. I'm just going to maximize this. And what I want to do is, first off, uh, because what we're going to be creating is only going to be using Facebook for now, uh, and I'm aware that some people may have their Instagram account linked to their Facebook account, I'm going to go up to Project, Edit Properties, and under Platforms, I'm just going to turn off Instagram as a selected platform. There we go. So. Under scene, I'm going to add an object. I'm just going to add our face mesh. And what this will do is this will create a 3D model or of a default face, this sort of hexagonal checkerboard uh, 3D mask of a standard face. And the face tracker object, which is actually what is detecting the human face, the eyes, the nose, the mouth, etc. So with this face mesh selected, I'm going to left mouse button on the materials with it on this property window, which is here, and a little plus button, and this will create us a new default material. And in this case, it's created as this white material, which is called material zero over in our assets panel. And with this material now selected, I'm now going to change the shader type to be face paint and I'm going to increase the background influence to 100. Now it is at this stage where we would make sure that we've logged onto Blackboard and we're going to download our week one assets. In this folder, you'll find three subfolders, which will be task one, task two, and task three. We're only going to be concentrating on task one in this video. And inside there, we have our face asset package, which has our meshes, which is the default face we can see here, and our texture files, which we'll be using to create our custom textures for our face mesh later. Another way to get these is if you've got Spark AR Studio open, you can go to help and download face assets. Now, it's probably a good idea at this stage to copy this package into our folder that we have just created to keep everything together. So now with our face package downloaded, I'm going to want to navigate to my face asset folder, navigate to textures, and I'm going to open facemeshtrackers.png and I'm going to open this up in Photoshop, like so. And what this is, is, is the basic grid, our 3D mesh flattened out. And these red dots indicate sort of stretch or distortion points, so our eyes, our nose and our mouth. A good trick to use is to, with our layer selected, we want to lock this. And then I'm just going to create a new layer, drag it underneath our mesh, which is our framework. And this is where I would add in my custom images, or I could paint in my own textures or materials. And I want to make sure that I try to keep to the grid, because anything that's outside of the grid, like over here, will not show up in our piece. So this is where you can spend quite a bit of time making it look a bit pretty, etc, um, etc. Et 
Now, I've already got some assets created. So for the purposes of this next stage, I'm going to skip forward a bit. So I'm just going to use an image from a, another task for this part. I'm just going to go to Add Asset, Import from Computer. I'm going to import my image that I have created. So in this case, I'm just going to import this one here. So if I save my image as a .png, it keeps the transparency. I want to make sure that whenever I save my image that I have first turned the grid off. So we don't want this grid showing up in our texture, so we just turn it off and then save it. If I don't want to keep transparency, I'll save it as a .jpg. So now we have our texture created. I can go back onto my material, select the texture drop-down and simply click select our texture that we've just imported into our file and there we go we have our face mesh added to our model if i want to preview this up use myself i could simply go to video and if i've got webcam enabled i could turn the webcam on and i can now see it applied to my own face if i change the shader type just to show you you can see what effects different shaders have so standard is actually influenced by a ambient light in my scene whereas face mesh is not. If I increase the background influence, it would affect how the hairline is dealt with. But yeah, as you can see, we can quite easily apply a face mesh to ourselves. Now we want to make sure that we save this part because we're going to be using this project's template now for tasks two and three which will go into a little bit more complicated grounds. Thank you for watching.